President Trump, I'm so humble that you would be here. President Obama never came to the hood, so to speak, right? <laughs> President Joe Biden, he went to the big NAACP dinner, but he never came to the hood. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Pastor. Very humble. Really nice. Thank you. My honor. The Trump camp wanted to keep their push for black votes going over the weekend, so he showed up in Detroit to promote his lies and propaganda with the help of a few of his supporters. I look at how Joe Biden became the president and allowed Afghanistan to collapse and allowed our soldiers to die for, 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 it, for it's, it's, it angers me. And, and we had a president who loved our soldiers and we, we need to put our president back in office. And I just wanna know President Trump Please don't allow our soldiers to walk around wearing red high heel shoes. Thank you, fellas. I guess you can be clueless about Afghanistan and completely bigoted about the military, no matter if you're Trump's preferred white supporter or a black supporter being used for the obvious con job that he's running. So one of the biggest crooks in the country. <laughs> and by that, 34 counts is what I'm talking Convicted about. Convicted felon, yeah. Convicted felon yeah. is telling black people that people are coming for their jobs. This is, this, is, this is the narrative that is being pushed to black voters. And they keep saying, you know, oh, black people are going to him. At, let's, can we look at the church? Can we get a, a oh, visual that, yes, of the please, church? Of the black church. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not sure that most of these people even knew where that church was before they knew he was coming there. The lies that fuel the hate and division that Trump thrives off of are standard at this point. So the lines about scary migrants coming for black people's jobs is barely even noticeable. But then again, he was barely talking to black voters anyway. On Saturday, Trump participated in a community roundtable event in Detroit at a predominantly black church. Trump spoke to a crowd of mostly white voters on Saturday where he took credit for the record low black unemployment rate achieved under President Joe Biden last year. I guess when you don't have a decent record in promoting and carrying out any policies that address the ways that society separates and disenfranchises the group that you're pandering to, the MAGA solution is to just take credit for other people's accomplishments. When lying is the standard policy for this many years, they figure no one will be able to determine when the truth ends and the lie begins. Quick side note example, MAGA minion Rick Scott is out here promoting how precious it is to have babies and allowing IVF treatments to be a part of it. He even cut a campaign ad saying so, as if his colleagues that literally watched him oppose their legislation to do so would just let him lie about his vote. And this isn't the first time Republicans followed their convicted leader's lead to try to take credit for popular legislation. It's standard in the world of alternative facts. And speaking of the pioneer of alternative facts, she lent her services to Trump again about Detroit. Don't be so overly dramatic about it, Chuck. What it, it, you're saying it's a falsehood, and they're giving Sean Spicer, our press secretary, gave alternative facts to that. But the point remains Wait a alternative that there's, facts? Biden's not doing anything like that. Look at the contrast of just this weekend. You got you got Donald Trump in Detroit yeah. talking to 8,000 people, and then at a black church, of course. It's really gotten out of hand. She has to know that someone must have taken a video or a picture of the event, especially since it was a photo op, where it'd be blatantly obvious that 8,000 people weren't packed inside that church. I mean, lies about the number of people he speaks in front of was the original catalyst for her alternative facts legacy in the first place. Well, I guess she's not switching now. You know, they really, really don't have a shred of respect for their supporters' ability to see when they're being lied to. Where is everybody? Where? As what? Democrats, we can't we can't allow this to go unchecked. Oh, but, uh, hi, I support you. Everybody, Phil Harper, I'm here, and the 45th President of the United States 
is now in this building speaking. And he has the audacity to come into our community, the same community that less than four years ago, he said that he tried to disenfranchise the vote. He said our votes were, were illegal. He said that we cheated. And he tried to disenfranchise over 200,000 people and their votes here in this community. Now, coming back to this community to ask for those same votes. More of us have to show up. More of us have to speak to it. The right thing to do is to check lies, to check this idea of disenfranchisement and the fact that you're back into our community. We, we have memories and we're not gonna allow it to go unchecked. This circus of an event somehow covered several examples of his extreme disregard for Maggie's ability to see right through him. You know, despite holding on to this day to the thoroughly discredited lie that the 2020 election was an absolute fraud, specifically disparaging voters in major cities and yes, the hood, Trump boldly went to one of these communities that he claims cheated him. So why is he trying to appeal to those cheaters in the hood? It might be because he brings his favorite black folks with him for each of his community outreach events for them to pose as a new black person, figuring that no one will notice. Like Michaela Montgomery, who was apparently a Detroiter over the weekend, happened to be that excited supporter at Chick-fil-A in Atlanta a few months ago, and an attendee at another event at Mar-a-Lago. It's almost like she donates her presence as a black person everywhere that Trump needs black people to be. Montgomery, a former judge of Republican Party staffer who regularly coordinates events for HBCU students open to conservative ideas to meet with politicians and activists, said she was notified earlier in the week that Trump would visit Atlanta's Vine City neighborhood during his trip to host a high dollar fundraiser in the city. She notified a private group chat of students she uses to coordinate events and job opportunities about the president's visit. She received immediate interest in appearing alongside him from around a dozen students. Wouldn't it be great for these Republicans to actually try to appeal to black voters rather than going through all of this effort to trick people of all races that they're trying to appeal to black people? They can't do that because their extreme disgust for them and policies that make sure to ignore black Americans won't make any sense to the bigoted, more important base that he's cultivated since 2015. He gets assists from well-known conservatives to retell imaginary stories of black support too. Totally anecdotal, misspelled by the way. But I can't tell you how many black patriots came up to us in Detroit who were not attendees and said they love Trump and will be voting for him in November. So believe Charlie Kirk's post and not what they were actually doing at his event in Detroit that Donald Trump headlined, by the way. It's an event that he pointed out none of his black patriots were attendees of. I wonder why. Run evil.